My name is Joseph selvin -Igum. I'm a professor of cardiovascular medicine at Flinders University, as well as a senior cardiologist at Flinders Medical Centre and a research fellow at SAMRI. Chronic kidney disease patients actually have a great risk, a very high risk of heart problems and often when they don't have a prior history of heart problems and often at a relatively young age. Um, unfortunately, chronic kidney disease with it carries with it other um, conditions such as high blood pressure, sometimes diabetes, but also exposure to dialysis and then sometimes even post um, kidney transplantation, some drugs all seem to predispose these patients to fairly high rates of heart disease and these patients unfortunately often die from heart disease either um, while they're on dialysis and waiting for a transplant or even following um, kidney transplantation. Um, what we're trying to do together with the kidney doctors at Flinders Medical Centre is to try and develop better tools to try and predict those patients who may suffer a serious heart event um, before they get it. Um, because if we can try and predict those patients at high, highest risk, we may well be able to do something to treat them a little bit more aggressively uh, and uh, hopefully prevent a serious heart event from occurring. So in studies that we have done at Flinders Medical Centre over the last four years and, and, and recently uh, published in uh, the Journal of the American Heart Association, we have shown that the, uh, this novel technique of bold MRI is able to uh, define the patients who have what we call a blunted oxygenation response. In other words, when their hearts are placed under stress in the MRI scanner, uh, the, some patients with kidney disease don't have an increase in um, blood supply to the heart muscle when they're under stress, which is what a normal response would be. But some patients with kidney disease have a blunted response. And what we have found when we follow these patients over time is that these patients seem to be the patients at greatest risk for a future uh, cardiovascular event, whether that is a, a, um, a life-threatening arrhythmia or a, a heart attack that occurs. Uh, remembering that all the patients that went into the study were patients with presumed good cardiac status. So these patients didn't have a pre-existing history of cardiac arrhythmias or previous heart attacks or even have any chest pain. So these were patients with presumably normal hearts. But what we tend to find is that at least a third of these patients seem to have a blunted response. And, and over time, when we followed them up over two years, we found that these are the patients that also seem to suffer from an earlier cardiac event. So what we're hoping to do now in ongoing studies is really extend this work, which was originally only conducted in about 50 patients, to around 200 patients. So we can follow a larger number with a, a greater duration of follow-up to see whether that is indeed the case. And then if confirmed, we would probably want to design an intervention study where we treat half the patients with early intervention based on the bold MRI result to see whether that then makes them do better.